Hello, it's weird because I'm doing the intro today. Um, so I have Molly here with me. I'm not sure why it's us. It's just our dad asked us to do it. Um, us too. We find it a bit weird, but we're giggling stuff. We're doing the wishing chair as like normal when I do it. I'm reading, so Molly's gonna be filming the pictures. Uh, well, I'm not, are there actually pictures in here? Yeah, there. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Not um, many pictures, but... Yeah! <laughs> this is so weird. Um, yeah. Okay, let's get started. Okay. One morning, Molly, Peter and Chinky were playing in the playroom at the bottom of the garden it had been raining all morning, which was horrid in the summertime. The children of the pixie were very tired of staying indoors. They had played Ludo and Snap and Drafts and Snake and Ladders and Dominoes. Now there didn't seem any other game to play, and they were getting cross and bored. Cheer up, Peter, said Molly. Look at Peter's, look at Peter's cross face. You look like a monkey that's lost its, lost, lost its tail. And you look like a giraffe with a sore throat, said Peter rudely. Don't be horrid, said Molly. Well, don't you then, said Peter. I'm not, said Molly. You are, said Peter. Now be quiet, you two, said Chinky. I don't like to hear you quarrelling. You only get silly. Don't interfere, said Peter crossly. You talk too much, Chinky. Yes, remember we've been given two ears but only one mouth, so you should talk only half as much as you hear, said Molly. Same to you, said Chinky. All girls talk too much. They don't, said Molly. How horrid of you just say that, Chinky. You're horrid this morning too, said Chinky. You're both horrid. Well, if you think that, just go away and play somewhere else, said Molly at once. We don't want you. All right then, I will, said Chinky, offended. And to the children's dismay, he got up and walked out of the playroom. There, now we want to see. Now see what you've done, said Peter, getting up. Send Chinky away. Suppose he doesn't come back. He ran to the door and called, Chinky, hi Chinky, come back a minute. But there was no answer. Chinky had gone. There was no sign of him anywhere. I do think you were horrid and silly, said Peter to Molly. Fancy sending Chinky away like that. I didn't mean to, said Molly, almost in tears. He was being horrid, so I was too. We were all being horrid. I wasn't, said Peter. Yes, you were, said Molly. No, I wasn't, said Peter. Yes, you were, said Molly. I shall smack you in a minute. Now, now, said a voice, and Mother looked in at the door. You are silly to quarrel like that. Uncle Jack is here and wants to know if you would like like to go with him to the farm. They have some puppies there, and he wants to choose one for himself. Would you like to go and help him? Oh, yes, said Peter and Molly. We'll put on our mats and rubber boots and go with him. So off they ran, forgetting all about their quarrel and all about Chinky, too. They went to the farm with Uncle Jack and chose a lovely black puppy with him. Then back home they went, chattering and laughing, forgetting all about how horrid they had been and enjoying their lovely walk. It was dinner time when they got home. They had dinner and ran down to the playroom afterwards, meaning to ask Chinky to play with them in the field outside in the garden. But Chinky wasn't in the playroom. Peter and Molly looked at one another and went Fred. Do you suppose he has really gone, said Molly, feeling upset. I'd, um, do you suppose he has really gone, said Molly, feeling upset. I don't know, said Peter. I'll whistle for him outside and see if he comes trotting out of the bushes. So Peter went to the door and whistled the little pixie tune that Chinky had taught him. But no Chinky came trotting up. It was really horrid. Suppose he never, never comes back again, said Molly, crying. Oh, I do, do wish I'd never said that to him, telling him to go away. I didn't really mean it. I sh shan't like going on adventures in the wishing chair unless Chinky is with us, said Peter. It isn't any fun without him. Peter, do you suppose he will never come and see us again, asked Molly. I shouldn't be surprised, said Peter. Pixies are funny, you know, not quite like ordinary people. The two children would have been very unhappy indeed if something hadn't sub suddenly happened to take their minds away from their disappointment. The wishing chair suddenly grew its wings again. Look, said Molly excitedly, the chair is ready to, to fly off again. Shall we go, Peter? I don't 
feel as if I want to, now Kinky's not here, said Peter gloomily. But Peter, I have such a good idea, said Molly, running to him. Listen, let's get in the wishing chair and tell her to go to Kinky's home, wherever it is. I expect he's gone back there, don't you think? Then we can stay where, where, where say we're sorry to it sorry to him and ask him to come back again that's a fine idea said peter at once come on molly get in we'll go at once so the two children squeezed into the wishing chair it had grown its full wet red wings round its legs and was lazily flapping them to and fro long feet off off into the air once more go to chinky's home commanded peter the chair rose up into the air flew out of the door and rose high above the trees it was fun to fly again the two children looked down on the gardens and fields and wished chinky were with them sitting in his usual place on the top of the chair i wonder where chinky's home is said P peter he has never told us we shall soon see, said Molly. The chair flew on and on just below the clouds. Soon it came to the towers and spires of the fairyland. Then it suddenly flew downwards into a little village of quaint, crooked houses, all of them small and all of them with bright, flowery gardens. The chair of the children jumped off at once. They went to the little red door out of the house and knocked. Won't Chiggy be surprised to see us, said Molly. The door opened and an old pixie woman with a very sweet face and bright eyes looked at them. Oh, said Molly in disappointment, we thought this was Chinky's home. So it is when he is at home, said, said the pixie woman. I am his mother. Come in, please. They went to, into a neat, spotless little chick, kitchen. Chinky's mother set ginger buns and lemonade in front of them. Thank you, said Peter. Do you know where Chinky is? He came and asked me to make up his bed for tonight, said the pixie woman. He said he had quarrelled with you and wanted to come and live at home again. The children went red. I didn't mean what I said, said Kinky, in little vo said Molly in a little voice. I expect Kinky was to blame too, said his mother. He went out to buy himself a new handkerchief and though I've been waiting and waiting for him, he hasn't come back. So I wondered if he didn't, if he had gone back to you again. No, he, he didn't come back said peter i wonder what's happened to him we'll say a little while and if you don't mind and i'll see if he comes back kinky didn't come back but in a short while a round fat pixie came running up the path and into the kitchen pu puffing and panting oh mrs twinkle he cried when he saw kinky's mother a dreadful thing has happened to kinky what cried everyone in alarm he had brought himself a nice new red handkerchief and he was walking down the lane home again when a big yellow bird swooped down from the air caught hold of kinky by the belt and flew off with him cried the pixie oh my oh my wept mrs twinkle i know that bird it belongs to the enchanter click clap he always sends that bird off his out when he wants to capture someone to help him poor chinky don't cry said peter putting his arms around the old woman we'll go and look for chinky the magic shell we have will take us we will get we will try to bring him back safely it's a very good thing we came to look for him come on molly get into the wishing chair and we'll let tell it to go to wherever chinky is in they both got peter told the chair to go to chinky and it rose in the air another adventure said molly i do hope it turns out all right Dun, dun, dun. Wow, this is like a first in a while that it's actually ended with two different chapters of one story because normally it's just like one story in one chapter. So, yeah, we'll see tomorrow. Um, oh, I think Monday is the last chapter, I think. Wait, that might be next Monday. Yeah. I'm not really sure. I can't remember. But we did say that like on the Monday, because it really annoyingly goes out for the rest of the week so tuesday wednesday thursday friday um we will do picture books up until because we'll finish that and then it's just me awkward stopping on a monday so yes um 